to see is a reaction video it is a video of opinion nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos my volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast. Uh, every once in a while I do have to make, I feel like I have to make these types of videos because every once in a while someone from TikTok or YouTube will hop into my comments field and uh, you know they're, they're basically probably new to quantum grammar and they approach me as if I'm also new, as if there's something that I perhaps don't know about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, history. Um, and 10 out of 10 times, these are individuals who do not have closure on the grammar at all. They're usually beginners, but they get caught up in the brouhaha of someone like a Russell J. Gould or a Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher. Or, or something like that. They'll get caught up in those types of scenarios, those types of fervors, those types of people, and they'll bring that to my domain, which is a very peaceful, very neutral domain, having only to do with the grammar, nothing to do with the drama. And uh, I'll go back and forth with these people a little bit. One such individual uh, approached me in, in a respectful manner on TikTok, where they were talking about Colin David Ivan Colin Miller surrendering the Title IV flag, and that there is evidence of it. And so I gave my standard Kuliana back, you know, what is your evidence? other than someone, i.e. Russell J. Gould, making these claims in a YouTube video. Are there witnesses? Is there testimony? Is there documentation? Better yet, is there video footage of this? Because don't you find it strange that all of this stuff happened, but only came out well after Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller left this plane, left this earth. Isn't it interesting that all this subterfuge, double dealing, crookedness, allegedly done by David Wynn Miller was all going on and Russell J. Gould never said anything about it until well after David had passed on. Isn't that interesting? Supposedly, Russell knew about all this stuff for years before it came out. I find it very interesting. Certainly. For example, even in the quote-unquote the joke military court-martial that Russell did on David in 2017, he didn't say anything 
about David Wynn Miller giving up a flag or betraying anyone or having questionable contracts with questionable contract parties. Never said anything about that. What he said was, or what he claimed was, that David lacked the capacity to remember names and dates and was no longer fit to operate in his capacity, whatever that was, in their corporation. Like he was relieving David of his duties in their unity states or whatever it was it was called. Never said anything about David being uh, betraying anyone or giving up a flag or anything like that. Never mentioned it. Never mentioned it. And if all these things were happening, if all this subterfuge and betrayal was happening, why was Russell standing right next to David in the seminars, never mentioning anything, never confronting him? I mean, he later on came out, you know, David made no secret that he had a contract with Bill Clinton, okay, or Kamala Harris. Never once did Russell criticize him while he was living about those contracts. Never said word one. Suddenly, after David passes, now everything's different. What was going on there? Now, I'm sure the Russell J. Gould uh, protagonist, Senator Morality apologists will come out and give some sort of excuse for their hero. Well, he couldn't say this because this, that, and the third. Or maybe his family was threatened. Or he didn't want to, you know, badmouth David while David was still here. So let's wait until after he's dead so we can badmouth him then. Because, of course, he can't do anything about it. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got that out of the way... This And this is directed to that TikToker who left the comments. I have been in this since the summer of 2017. I have personally spoken with Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller multiple times in the year before he passed away. He was one of my teachers. I've also been in contact with Colin Russell Heifen, J. Colin Gould via email for a couple years. Monty Mueller has contacted me. Just about every single name that you can think of in the quantum grammar spectrum, I've communicated with them at one time or another. I am not new to this. Dare say I'm a veteran of it, considering that 9.9 .9 out of 10 people involved in this uh spectrum, the quantum grammar spectrum, do not have closure on the grammar. And I can prove that. That's why I asked the TikTok commenter, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would, where would you put your closure on the grammar? And then, of course, they said, I'm still studying. Well, then, if you're still studying, then how can you tell if someone else's grammar is correct or not? How do you know they're correct? You don't. Until you learn it yourself. And if you're learning it from someone who's teaching it wrong, well, then you're in a tough spot. All right. So now that that's out of the way, I will preface my reaction to this material as such. I am using an audio of this video simply because in my five plus years as a YouTube content creator, using, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of videos to react to, to talk about replaying footage. Only one individual has ever tried to file a copyright claim on me. Only one individual has ever tried to do it twice and failed both times. And that individual is Rachel Dara Prince, i.e. Russell J. Gould's uh, liaison. I don't know what you want to call her. She has gone through YouTube and tried to get my channel a copyright strike and have it taken down, which she failed. So that's why I'm not using the video. That's the type of people I'm dealing with here. So here we go. Let's listen. Well, what I'm going to do in this video, as I said in the intro here, is... I'm going to be looking for evidence of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge. And I'm also going to be looking for evidence that the TikTok commenter claims is in the video, which is evidence that David Wynn Miller gave up the flag and that there's evidence of. So 
So here we go. Let's have a listen. Corporation case, colon, R, period, R, period, tilde 385, tilde. Tilde 385. You would need a hyphen in between compound facts. A tilde does not function as a hyphen. If you're going to have a compound fact, if you're going to bring more than one fact together, you need hyphens. And if it's a location, then you would also use a tilde in conjunction with the hyphen. I'm not sure if Russell forgot that, or maybe he just doesn't know. 460 tilde 312 colon U period S period. Operation toilet flush and. Also, operation of vowel in front of a consonant is no contract. So, why even use that word? Someone who claims to have been doing the grammar as long as Russell has, why would he use a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word for a fact? Why would he use the word operation? There are plenty of other words you could use for that. But anyways. The history of the Federal Postal Court. The first opening of the Federal Postal Court in quantum grammar was in 2001 in Federal District Court in Casper, Wyoming in a in corporation case number R period R period. Did he just say that their federal postal court opened inside a district court? So does that mean that Russell J. Gould's federal postal court is subservient to that district court? That's interesting. 512-587-202-U period S period. And in that case, the mechanics of being in judge was performed by me, postmaster colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, where the clerk of court as the port authority joined me on contract to establish a judgment, an order, a command. And that command, because the clerk of the courts is the port authority as postmaster, when the clerk joined the estate of the charter vessel claim contract, the clerk and claimant became two postmasters in joinder, in joinder of the contract. And the contract was then banked by me within the 45 day trust moratorium. Bent? He bent the contract? Isn't bending modifying? in the establishment of the Global Postal Union in Bern, Switzerland. And in my banking of the judgment, the Port Authority at the Universal Postal Union complied with banking the contract and the disqualification of the fictitious grammar charts of the Universal Postal Union. So, let me get this straight. He's saying, <clears throat> that they filed in these documents to the Universal Postal Union and the Universal Postal Union. I mean, you cannot contract in correct sentence structure with someone who is not a live life claimant in correct sentence structure. So that would have to presume that the UPU people who filed in Russell's contract were live life claimants and had the authority to do so unless Russell is trying to file in something to a fic fiction system, which would make sense if what he said earlier about the, the federal postal court being in a district court, if that's in a district court, then it's in a fiction uh, domain anyways. So he's filing in his quantum grammar stuff into fiction. So he's basically saying to my ears, that what he's doing is fiction. The banking was done in July of 2001 and the judgments were made in June of 2001. Thus, I complied with the 45 day trust moratorium, maintaining the rules of the continuance of evidence. Here's one thing that most people miss. Like you hear him talking about 45 day trust, you know, these are timelines, all right, folks, these are drugs. Anybody can come up with these. Who agrees to them? Who authorizes them? Where do they come from? Okay. If he's the one 
that is the creator, the author of the contract, then yes, he can create his own timelines and the other contract parties that he's attempting to contract with would either have to agree with those timelines or not. Because he is the author, he is the, the authority of the contract. Otherwise, if they're in joinder with him, and their names, their autographs are also on the contract, but they're also live life claimants, then they would have to agree to those and then they would create those timelines together. That's where the timelines come from. It's not an automatically automatic thing where it comes from some unknown authority that, oh, it's 45 days, that's the be-all, end-all. You could make it 44 days if you wanted to. It just depends upon who's the authority of the contract. Which is the number one job of the contract, is that the rules of the continuance of the evidence must be maintained at all times. With the disqualification of the charters for the corporate structure of the Universal Postal Union in July of 2001, the shareholders of the Universal Postal Union and the tenants of the Universal Postal Union, as well as the owners of the Postal Union in Bern, Switzerland, were put on publication and traversed in a face-to-face -face meeting with me in 2003 on the establishment of the new postal corporation called the Global Hyphen Postal Hyphen Union. Union is no contract, vow in front of a consonant. In that establishment, I closed the door so nobody could come back into the Universal Postal Union and set up a quantum system, which the Postal Union concurred with in that space. Basically, I built a system that could not be forged, that could not be monopolized by someone else because they were not the creator of the quantum system. He's talking about quantum system. I don't know what he means by quantum system. If he's talking about quantum grammar, he did not create quantum grammar. He is not the author of it. Therefore, he's not an authority of it by his logic, what he just said. He's not the creator <clears throat> of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So therefore, he doesn't have the authority to say who uses it or who doesn't use it. Because he has to first prove that he can use it himself. And if you heard at the beginning of the video when, where when I started listening to this, he shows a severe lack of knowledge in how to com articulate a compound fact, for example. And therefore, Operation Toilet Flush. Flushing the turds right out of the quantum system and flushing the Universal Postal Union down the drain. That's some really funny imagery there. But guess what? Guess what is still in existence to this day, despite what he claims happened in 2001. The Universal Postal Union still exists. It's still a corporation. It still has an address. It still has employees. It's still working. And there is no mention of any global postal union or whatever he's talking about, except in his videos. So, folks, you can believe what you want to believe, this guy has claimed he shut down courts, yet I, see, I still see, see people going in and out of courtrooms. He claims to have disqualified judges, judges who continued their careers on the bench. I mean, there's no end to what this guy is claiming, but there, is severe, there are severe limitations on the proof of anything that he says. So the turds can't come back into the postal system and try to reauthorize a system that was already established because they lack the knowledge of a judgment. They lack the protocols of the flag. They lack, lack the mechanics of the quantum grammar system. Therefore, it's a copyrighted material. The quantum postal system. In order to copyright correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you must first prove through the rules of the continuance of the evidence that you actually know how to freaking use it correctly. I challenge anyone out there to show me a written contract, typed contract, authored by this man, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, that uses correct grammar, that is mathematically certified the sentences. 
forwards and backwards that has the correct uh, 1 by 1.9 flag on it with no modifications, no spires on top, show me a correct contract for the grammar. Because in order to hold a copyright for something, in order to have authorization to do something, you have to know what you're doing. Authority comes from knowledge. You know what you're doing, and you're an author. Now you have authority. But if you don't, the only authority you have is in your own mind and in what you can convince other people that you have or if they allow you to have authority. But other than that, you hold no authority. As well as the Quantum Postal Court, which is known as the Federal Postal Court. With my syntax into the charter for the Universal Postal Union, it nullified the authorization for the Universal Postal Union to enter into contract with anyone. With my syntax into the charter for the Universal Postal Union, it nullified the authorization for the Universal Postal Union to enter into contract with anyone. Okay, so folks, do you hear what he just said? He claims that because he's syntaxed, which by the way, his syntaxing is not even correct because in his syntaxing, he will modify adverbs using other adverbs. And he syntaxes tangible contract words as adverbs and non-tangible contract words as adjectives, which is not correct. But he just said that because he syntaxed something, now the Universal Postal Union cannot contract with anyone. Who is he to be able to command other people whether to contract or not to contract in whatever venue, whether it's correct sentence structure, quantum grammar, quantum system, fiction, plain English, whatever. How does he have authority to do that? Nobody has authority to do that. Okay, that's fiction system thinking by my mind. Why would you want to force someone to be able to contract or not contract, which means putting food on the table for your family? Oh, suddenly I come in and say, well, your, your grammar's wrong, so now you can't contract with anyone and you can't uh, make money. You can't earn money now. You can't contract with anybody because I said so. How ridiculous does that sound to you? Seriously, this is the stuff that put me off this guy years ago. His attitude and the, the like, this is just my personal position on it, you know, but it, it's like, to me, it's arrogance that he, he would presume that he has the power to do that. Since the year 2001, at the meeting in 2003, it was certified by the Postal Union employees that were at the, at the meeting in Bern, Switzerland on June 18th of 2003. The certification was the proof that the Universal Postal Union's charters were fraud. Certification is the verification of the charters for the Universal Postal Union to be in fictitious grammar, which means they modified their nouns with adverbs, adjectives, and pronouns. Uh, nouns or no-nos. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it's a pronoun or a noun, it's still a no-no. That's still fiction thinking. Creating pronouns and verbs. Creating a condition of state of fiction, a, a babble of something that does not exist. For all... Yes, I, I know in theory what he's saying, what he's trying to say here, but it does exist. It does exist, okay? Fictitious of conveyance of grammar does exist. Fiction babble does exist. Plain English does exist. It exists as plain for anyone to see that it exists. Of the dumbasses of the world. And here we go. And another thing that put me off this guy is his name calling, his ad hominem attacks, his use of logical fallacies to get his points across, his stringing together of all these... I guess, sort of uh, unusual terminologies to try and it, it sounds like he's saying something that's complicated and intelligent when really it's, it's not really making much sense at all. Like he's saying the certification of this is the verification that the Universal Postal Union's contracts were a fictitious conveyance of grammar. That's not certification. Certification is when two or more uh, contract parties come together to certify something, to verify something, to prove something. Or if it's you, yourself, 
uh, it's when one, it's when two or more senses come together to create knowledge of something. Like uh, I can certify this cup because I can feel it. That's one sense, touch. All right, sight. I can see it. Okay, so that's two. That's certification. I can hear it. Whoops. <laughs> I can hear it. So that's three. So you see what I'm saying? That's how it works. Well, he's just kind of stringing together words that aren't really saying anything. Who think that there's a banking system. Who think that there's presidents. Well, there is a banking system and there are presidents. Look around. I'll bet you dollars to donuts there are more people that believe in the concept of a banking system and presidents than there are that believe in the concept of what this guy sells. It is just not. It is martial law. And the theater of martial law is controlled by might makes right. And that's exactly what he promulgates because he puts the spire on top of his 1 by 1.9 flag, which negates the contract of the flag. So he's not even using correct sentence structure when he's using that flag. So you better be correct when you bring your might make right or you're going to get flushed in the operation toilet flush. And that's probably why he hasn't really had much success. Because as he says, you have to be correct. And modifying a flag is not correct and using a fictitious conveyance of grammar is not correct. <laughs> The consequences of my maintaining the rules of the continuance of evidence created many scenarios in my life, from my battles in Wisconsin to Michigan and other battles against the U.S. military in the largest court martialing case of corporation case, R period, R period, tilde 385, tilde 410, tilde 312, colon U period, S period, that was conducted for four years at the Washington Mall with the U.S. military documenting and videotaping each trial. Because of my choices, there were many scenarios that the world is unaware of that happened within the Federal Postal Court. The first casualty of the Federal Postal Court was from my friend, Janice K. Colon Logan, who fell victim to the lies and the setup by my partner, David Wing Colon Miller, Little Janice. who told her she was a federal judge, but she was untrained in the mechanics of being a federal judge. Thus, Janice hyphen K colon Logan was David hyphen Win colon Miller's first victim of going to jail under false claims that she was claiming to be a federal judgment. Okay, so this was all going on while Russell's right there. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Russell's right there next to David doing seminars at this time, preaching the word, and yet he's allowing this Janice Logan to get spun up. He's not defending her. He's not helping her. Why? Why is that? Why did he stand by and not do anything if it was so wrong? Because she did not have the credentialing, the tools of a judgment, which is the seat of judgment for a judge and bank banker, which is corporation case R period, R period, 512-587-202, colon U period, S period for a judge and under false claims that she was claiming to be a federal judgment because she did not have the credentialing, the tools of a judgment, which is the seat of... Did he just say she was claiming to be a federal judgment? Going to jail under false claims that she was claiming to be a federal judgment. She was claiming to be a federal judgment? I've never heard of an individual claiming to be a judgment. Because she did not have the credentialing, the tools of a judgment, which is the seat of judgment for a judge and bank banker. The tools of judgment, which is the seat of judgment? Which is corporation case R period, R period, 512-587-202, colon U period, S period. That is the certification of what a judgment looks like. So in order to be a federal judge or a judge of any stature, you must have, sit at the seat of the judgment, which means you have, must have contract in hand, verifying that you have the credentialing to command the authority of the court, command the authority of the fee for freight for the contract, for the judgment, and command the authority to hold trial within that court building. Okay. What he's saying here is 100% correct in the context that you 
or I or anyone else can be a judge if you know how to do these things. What do you think, who do you think authorized David Wynn Miller or Russell J. Gould to be judges when they first started using this in courts, walking into courtrooms and things like that? Who, who authorized them? It's my guess that no one did. They went in using their knowledge as their authority and they claimed these titles without anyone grandfathering them in. Like they told stories of, of uh, judges taking off their black dresses, coming down off their third Master Mason plane and sitting in the well of the court and teaching them the secrets of the legal system but even that, you know, to me, is complete and utter bullshit because that's a fiction system. Why would you want anything to do with that in the first place? So, friends and neighbors, you can be a judge if you want to. You can be a federal judge if you want to. If you know what you're doing, if you know what that means, if you give closure to those terms in your contract. You give closure to what a federal judge is. You give closure to what federal is. You give closure to what judges, the duties, what it takes, the qualifications. You give closure to all that. And then you give closure to what a court is. A court can be a piece of paper. A court can be out there under the apple tree. It can be a circle. It can be in a building. It can be anywhere you want it to be. You, as the authority of your construct, create that. And that's what he and David did. They created their own construct of the federal postal court, um, which you can create a federal postal court too, just the same as anyone else. Rule one, rule equal. Nobody has a monopoly on that. So that's what they did. And if you notice, like if you notice in some of those videos, where they have federal postal court hearings. I think there's one with Russell uh, in some big garage somewhere, which, I mean, that's just, uh, you, you have to watch it yourself to see it. it uh, I got a good chuckle out of that. Or one where David Wynn Miller's doing the same thing and like a, he rented out a, 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 a meeting room in a hotel, lot, a hotel somewhere. He did the same thing. And then they'll sit there and they'll, they'll call out, you know, would such and such approach the court? And then they'll stand there and be like, and then they say it two or three times, and they say, well, you know, they didn't show up, so now we got to give a default judgment or something like that. You know, I mean, it's just funny because they send out summons, but no one ever shows up to their court because no one participates with that court because it's their court. The fiction court sends out a, a summons. Guess what? Most people will answer it and acknowledge it. Why? Because the fiction system has the guns and clubs. They have the might makes right, as he says. They can send people to your door to drag you to that building or wherever the court is. David and Russell don't have that power. Do you see what I'm saying here? Are you getting the picture of what actually is going on or was going on with those guys without that certification and without banking it after you've received your judgment you are not a federal judge this was janice hyphen colon logan's failure and david hyphen win colon miller's due diligence negligence in educating janice hyphen k colon logan on what she needed to be a judge therefore in 2002 to 2004 she spent two years in jail for her not knowing and david hanging her out to dry it is very unfortunate that the world at the time did not have the full closure about what was happening to the victim, Janice Hyphen K. Colin Logan, and what David Hyphen Wynn Colin Miller spun up. So 2001, 2002, folks, listen very closely to me. He just said 2001 to 2002. How long ago was that? Over 20 years ago. Russell J. Gould has known about this for over 20 years. Never said a word about it while David was still alive. Never confronted him about it. Even though he knew, supposedly, that Janice was David's first victim. And she went to jail for two years, allegedly. 
which is a terrible thing. And Russell didn't do anything about it. Russell didn't say a word about it. Russell stayed right alongside David the whole time up until David's passing. Well, about a year before David's passing. And that's just crazy to me. It's crazy to me that people will overlook all this obvious stuff. Casualty for someone's life. And this is very unfortunate. And I'm coming forward today with that full closure saying if you're going to claim to be a judge, these are the criteria that you must have in place prior to you making these claims. Okay, so my question then is what makes him the be all end all judge of what makes a judge? And what is the closure on judge? Because in fiction terms, the fiction system, what they do is, from my perception, they get people to participate in some imaginary authority that they supposedly hold over the people. You see some, you know, a guy in a black dress sitting on a third plane inside a courtroom next to a yellow fringed flag with a eagle on top of it or a chicken or whatever or a ball or a spire. Supposedly they have some sort of authority. The only authority they have is given to them by the system because they have guns and clubs because they can force people to do things against their will using force. Might makes right. But war negates contract. So again, going back to what he just said, who gave him the authority to set out the terms and conditions of what it takes to be a judge? Unless what he's conveying to you or to me and to anyone else out there are the terms and conditions of what it takes to be a judge in his little construct, his little biosphere, whatever he's doing, his universal or not universal, global postal union, the no contract term, whatever that is, unity states. If, if you want to be a judge in that domain, well then yeah, certainly you would have to abide by his terms and conditions if he is the author of that construct. But as far as correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar goes, he shows no evidence that he has full closure on the grammar, that he knows how to use it correctly, forwards and backwards, mathematically certified. So number one, how can he claim authority over the over a grammar that he cannot use correctly? Number two, how can he tell other people how to use it if he doesn't know how to use it? Number three, how can he tell someone what the terms and conditions of being a judge are when the only one in his construct that has ever get uh, provided or set out terms and conditions of how to be a judge would be him. So he can't tell the Universal Postal Union that they can't contract with someone else. He can't tell me that I can't contract with someone else and I can't use correct grammar. He can't tell you that you can't be a federal postal judge in your own jurisdiction. I mean, he can tell you that, but it's up to you whether you believe that shit or not, because it's certainly not true. It's certainly not true. Now, again, let me put this in perspective. If you are trying to be a federal postal judge in his jurisdiction, the fiction jurisdiction of the global postal union or whatever it is he calls it, the quantum system that he's created, well, then, yeah. If you want to participate with him, then, yeah, you would need his permission. You would need to have his authorizations, and you would be subservient to him. You would submit to him. You would bow down to him. Okay? I understand that. But what I'm talking about here is he cannot tell people outside of that construct what to do. That's a trespass. That's most certainly a trespass. doesn't matter if it's fiction or what domain it is. One may only make a claim for oneself. And if you're going to try and force people to do things, then you're no better than the might makes right fiction system and as far as I'm concerned I don't want anything to do with you in the trash that's that's my position because I'm about autonomy I'm not about authoritarianism 
or chain of command or hierarchy or anything like that. I'm about autonomy. Rule one rule. Genuinely, rule one rule equal. What this guy talks about, like he mentions rule one rule equal, but he doesn't appear to be about that. He always puts himself above other people. Like he's telling you right now, well, this is what it takes to be a judge. Who's he to say? Does he wear a black robe? What kind of judge is he talking about? Every man or woman are judges of their own lives and biospheres. Who is he to say any different? Otherwise, you're giving false closure to the general public and you are a public safety hazard, period. Last week, for the first time in many years, you're a public safety hazard? Okay. Let me give you a quick example, ladies and gentlemen, before we keep moving on here. A couple years ago, this man, Russell J. Gould, put forth some sort of uh, arrest, arrest warrant for Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher. All right. He was calling bounty hunters or bounty seekers. He was offering rewards to go arrest Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher because he's a public safety hazard, blah, blah, blah. You know how many people tried to uh, perform on that contract? Well, let, let me put it another way. Guess who's still out there making bank, teaching their little whatever they teach? That's right. Mark Lowercase K. Kishon is still out there doing what he does. He's not been slowed down in the least. And I bet he makes more money at it than Russell does. And he doesn't have closure on the grammar either, at least not publicly that I've seen. So that shows you what type of authority this guy has, that if he put an arrest warrant out, if he's the commander in chief, if he's the mustard master or whatever other titles he wants to claim, the general of the post, the postmaster general, the commander of the militaries, well, guess what? Mark Lowercase K is still out there <clears throat> running around doing what he does with no impediments. And this guy is still making the same tired old claims he's been making for decades. And there has been absolutely positively no change or no perceptible change in the fiction system at all. So you can make of that of what you want. I contacted Janice Ipen K. Colin Logan. And I gave her closure that I was going to use her name as a sample of what happens when you are not a correct federal postal judge within the quantum system. And she had one word of counsel to those of you who are claiming to be federal postal judges without authorization one word. as for the correct credentialing to be a judge. Number one, David hyphen Winkola Miller could not author. Well, that's way more than one word there, Russell. <laughs> okay, so folks. And especially to the TikToker that inspired this video. This is not continuance of the evidence. Russell saying that he spoke to Janice K. Logan is not continuance of the evidence. It's hearsay. Where's the recording of the conversation? Let's have Janice on here. Let's see her face. Let's hear it from her. But we don't have that. We just have Russell talking. So did he really talk to her? Who knows? You either take his word for it or you don't. Right, you as a judge. That does not make you a judge. And number two is you will be stood down and somebody will sit you down and put you in your place. And to the general public that you don't take this technology for granted because it has consequences of accountability. And Janice, I think, Colin Logan learned that lesson. I highly doubt Janice K. Logan said any of that. That's just my personal perception. Foucault and Mark, hyphen Daniel, Foucault and Seeger. Hey, Mark, hyphen Daniel, Colin Seeger. Um, in 2006, you were a method server against Donald A. Davis, who was a U.S. District Deputy Attorney General for the Western District of Michigan. And you were a method server for Colin Cardella, hyphen and Colin Darland and James Colin Darland in 2006 in the Western District of Michigan in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Were you the method server in that case? Yes, sir. 
And as the method server in that case, you were you heard and got the audio tape of my doings in that court case. Okay. So what's going on here, uh, to the best of my perception, is that this Seeger fellow was Russell's method server. And if you're familiar with 12B7 through 12B1, service of the method, method of the service, he was a method server. And he's saying, the way Russell's phrasing it is, this guy was method server against so-and-so, against so-and-so. So that leads me to think that this guy was working with Russell, with Russell's postal court. So this, again, plays into the protagonist center morality that I talk about in that this fellow is in with Russell. Like he's one of Russell's cronies. He's not an unbiased party is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay? Because you're going to find this if you look at, uh, if you go over to the Syntax Learning Center and you look at Joey John Lester or you look at uh, um, Muriel Metabigs or uh, I don't know if Gordon Michael Schiller's there anymore or if you look at Mari Shapka, if you look at, um, who's the other guy? Uh, Edward Sloan, I think is his name, and a few other people over there. You look at them, they're all like acolytes of Russell's. They're like devout followers. They they hinge on his every word and worship the guy like, a, like he's a god. Literally, like a superhero or something. And that, that stuff just, I mean... To be quite honest, folks, that stuff, type of stuff gets on my nerves, hero worship. It really does. Because for myself and my own construct, I am as far away from that as you can get. I mean, that I personally try to cultivate humility. I don't know if I am successful in it or not. It would be up to you, the viewer, or the people I come in contact with to be the judge of that. But that is what I try to cultivate. And uh, I don't go, you know, if people try to put me in that position like if they talk to me and they call me boss or or they like trying to elevate me I immediately put a stop to it because I'm no better than anybody else okay everybody has their specialties everybody has you know their special skills and stuff mine is correct sentence structure communication parsing, syntax grammar the grammar okay that's mine you have yours I have mine anyways point I'm making is that all those people over there, I mean, I had, and I can show you the email, which I will do if I ever continue my journey video series. I have an email from a gentleman who contacted me asking me to come on some Winifred Adams radio show to ask Russell pre- uh, conceived questions that will make him look good. Like they wanted me to come on air in the public and ask Russell questions that would make him look good because they said they needed to improve Russell's public image. <laughs> so they're not above propaganda. Let's put it that way. I have the proof of this. I'm not kidding around. And that's why I'm saying it. I wouldn't say it if I didn't have the proof of it, which I will put in the public eventually here if I get around to it. If I get 6,000 subscribers by January 1st, 2024, I'll make that video. But that that's so point being, these people will definitely say whatever is needed to be said to sort of bolster Russell or make him look a certain way in a certain light. Yes, sir. Where in that case, they came after me and I won the case against Donald A. Davis. And the case was out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yes. And in that case, you witnessed and purchased the audio 
of my trial from the clerk of courts. Yes, sir. Okay, before we go any further, this guy witnessed and purchased the audio from the clerk of courts in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Where the hell is the audio? Why aren't we listening to sound bites right now? If this is if this is Russell truly trying to give closure and come correct and show that he is who he says he is and can back up some of his claims, then I don't want to hear these two jaw jacking for the next five minutes. I want to hear sound bites from Grand Rapids, Michigan from 2006 of this court case. That's what I want to hear since this guy has in his possession the physical audio of that case. They better be pressing the play button and letting us listen to it right now if they are truly all about providing a continuance of the evidence rather than hearsay bullshit. And on the audio, you witnessed the flag bearer of the Title IV flag, David Hype and Wynne Colin Miller, take the fiction, gram, fiction oath administered by the clerk of court and surrender his position as flag bearer and corporate owner of the Title IV flag in 2006. Yes, unfortunately I did. And when David took that fiction oath and he surrendered it, how did that make you feel? This, friends and neighbors, by my perception, is just another smear job by Russell because we're not hearing the audio of David surrendering his flag or taking a fiction oath. We're not hearing that at all. We're hearing Russell telling a story with his crony, his follower, who's yes, sir, no, sir. So let's hear the story they have to tell. Let's... Let's hear the fiction story that they're trying to get us to buy into. Uh, confused and um, disappointed. Dis disappointed. Yeah, yeah he, he went against everything we were fighting for. Did others in the community and there were quite a few coming on board at that time. When they heard the audio, did the movement of the quantum grammar lose steam at that point because of Dave's surrendering of the Title IV flag? I believe so, because um, they didn't they didn't understand why he did it. Um, they didn't understand uh, the consequences of what he did, and you know they're working so hard to try to make something work, and then you get this, you know, and to make that little. A whole lot of stuff. Folks, this is propaganda at its finest. Think about it logically. This is 2006. 2006. Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller supposedly surrendered his flag in front of witnesses. Was this ever mentioned in a video in a director's party from 2006? until the time they stopped doing him in 2016. Was it ever mentioned by Russell? Was it ever mentioned by this guy? Did anybody come forward? Because this, because Russell's saying, well, did the quantum grammar lose steam? The community, you know, people involved in it, everybody was working towards this. And they were like, wow, they were like thrown for a loop because David surrendered his flag. Not one freaking person mentioned it. Not even Russell, Jay Gould mentioned it until after Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller passed away. <laughs> How convenient. Now, I can predict this. It stands to reason that Russell asked this guy how he felt about David surrendering his flag. Now to make the propaganda complete and the character protagonist center morality building, uh, bolstering Russell's image, I can predict that Russell's probably going to ask the guy, well, how did you feel when I did this? And he's going to put himself into the mix. And because uh, what he's doing is, is like a smear campaign. It's showing, trying to, to paint a picture of David's character. And now 
I'm going to predict is he's going to juxtapose that against his own alleged flawless character. Let's see what happens. Yeah, when, when he surrendered, others lost a lot of respect for David Hyphen and Colin Miller and what we were doing at the time in the grammar. Completely. Uh, completely. Yeah. How did it make you feel about me keeping my word and not surrendering the Title IV flag? Oh, I, there was no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen. <laughs> that um, because you have strong convictions and everybody knows it. Um, you do what you say. Everybody you knows do. it. And um, you so do you what you say. Put up a shut up. You shut down the courts. Courts are closed. They got freaking windows over all the boards and all the courts and all the United States in the world. The courts are boarded up. The UPU is boarded up. No, it's not. So I've heard enough. I've heard enough of this. This is not evidence. This is not proof. This is a smear job. 100%. And I think, personally, I think it's despicable. That this continues to go on. I mean, why? Why? Folks, I am not minimizing in any way, shape, or form what Colin Russell, hyphen J. Colin Gould may or may not have gone through. Not in any way, shape, or form. What I'm doing is asking for real proof, not the testimony of a follower. They said that that guy bought the audio of the trial from the clerk of the courts in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 2006. Where is it? Why aren't they playing the audio for us? That's continuance of the evidence. That would be something if they would actually do that. Russell said he talked to Janice K. Logan. Where's the audio of that? Why isn't she on video? Why do we have to take his word for everything at every single turn? If there's all this video footage, if there's all this evidence, where is it? If Russell has the power he claims to have, why doesn't he release it? Why doesn't he, if he's the commander of the military, why doesn't he send the military in and release all this footage, all this proof? Friends and neighbors, there is no doubt that this man went through something. There is no doubt that he was in and out of court on the battlefield. There is no doubt that this guy suffered and went through something. But what was it? What's the real story? Because we don't have that. All we have is his word. And since Colin David Ifa Wynn Colin Miller passed away in the summer solstice of 2018, we no longer have that resource. David can no longer defend himself. He can't answer for anything. And there is really no one else out there who is qualified to step in and defend David Wynn Miller against these things. It's certainly not me, okay? Those are some pretty big shoes. What I can do is call attention to the fact that there is no tangible, material, concrete, certifiable evidence of anything that Russell is saying having to do with David Wynn Miller. There just isn't. And to that TikTok commenter and anyone else who's sort of, you know, straddling the fence here about this, I appeal to your logical mind. Listen to what this guy is saying. Think about it. Okay? Think about it as a, it's a total stranger coming off the street telling you some kind of story. Are you going to believe that just based upon what they're saying? Or are you going to ask for proof? Are you going to ask for the pudding? Because the proof is in the pudding. So what's my stake in all this? I don't have a stake in it. I feel it's my duty as a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor to make people aware of the pitfalls and landmines out there. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm asking you to take a closer look at your assumptions. Because if you think that what he's saying is true and correct, you are participating with a presumption assumption because there is no evidence of it out there. 
okay? I've made this claim before. I've been teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar since February of 2018. I have 900 videos on my YouTube channel, approximately, that can back this claim up. 900 pieces of evidence showing that I know what I'm talking about. I have hundreds of students all over the earth who have taken classes with me. I've had consultations with even more people all over the earth. Okay? I have certifications that I know how to teach the grammar. I know the grammar like the back of my hand. That is a continuance of the evidence. That is something that can be proven. You can email me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. You can email me and I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, which costs nothing except for your now space, where we can get on video and audio and you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And I will answer your questions. I will prove to you that I can back up my claim that I know this grammar like the back of my hand. I can prove every claim I make as far as that goes. I hope that speaks volumes in comparison to what I just <laughs> played you. All right? I'm offering you a venue for closure. It's up to you if you want to take it. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.